Okay, so here we are on September 4th, so it's very late in the season. And what you're looking at is a box. It's the bottom box of a flow hive. And we have a swarm in it. Very late in the season, they're going to need every edge we can give them. And we're going to have to uh, feed these bees. One of the things I want you to notice when we're trying to help out the honeybees is first of all, uh, look at this wide entrance, this landing board. Now this hive, uh, the bottom board is screened, so there's plenty of ventilation here. But we want to give them another edge, and that's giving them a smaller area to defend. The culprits, of course, are robbing bees and the notorious yellow jackets. Very simple thing. This is regular window screen. And I just cut equal lengths of it and tripled it over here. And we're going to fold it into a little V and just hand push it into this little opening. Now the flow hive bottom boards do not have the standard size entrance reducer openings. They're a little smaller. So we're just going to loose fit this in there. And uh, wasps, for example, the yellow jackets can't pull it out. The only thing that's going to move this would be a mouse or something trying to get in. And we're not worried about that. And if it were moved, we would know that there's a mouse around trying to get into our colony here. But what we're trying to cut down on is the amount of effort that they have to put out to defend the colony and of course uh, limit the access zone for the yellow jackets which sometimes sneak in on the far edges to either side. It's a small colony. The swarm I suspect was about three or four pounds. Not huge but not terribly small. I think their chances are really good because we're still going into a pretty strong nectar flow here with the goldenrod, the asters, they're getting pollen from a number of sources including sunflowers. And uh, this is a simple thing. So we're closing it in without shutting down ventilation. We want them to stay cool. Today is 88 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we've got about a four inch opening that they can very easily defend and they inspect the bees that are coming in from the field here. And uh, this is just a close up to show you that our guards are doing their job pretty easily. Notice them grabbing and inspecting every bee that comes in. This is a pretty good behavior for a newly captured and hived swarm. So I'm pretty pleased with them. I had no problems. We have uh, uh, acorn pre-waxed frames inside. Some have drawn comb. If you want to keep your swarm from taking off, uh, put a frame of brood in there and they will not leave those developing brood. And it gives them a good kickoff. They're kind of uh, have their work cut out for them here as we're going to run out of resources within the next 8 to 10 weeks. And we'll talk a little more about uh, the pollen resources in the area. But I'm also doing things to other beehives that I have in my apiary. And I want to show you some of the landing board and entry differences and uh, what we're doing about yellow jackets in the apiary. You can hear my chickens in the background here. They roam freely through the apiary and they collect bugs all day long. And of course this uh, hive is situated in the shade. So that's going to help them out too. The uh, blue spruce, which is on our right here as we're looking at the scene, is where the swarm congregated. And we clipped the branch off and then uh, I put it right on top of the hive. This is one of those Be Smart Design ventilated tops also which vents without allowing other insects to get in, like the yellow jackets, and even the bees can't come in through the top. And uh, now we're looking at the whole width of the board and the activity is pretty good. So it's good to see them already bringing in pollen, which is interesting to me, considering they really don't have any place to put it unless they're drawing out comb uh, in record time. Now we're looking at another standard Langstroth hive. This is the landing board and we have not restricted the entrance. That's because there's an abundance of bees. This is an extremely strong colony of bees and they're more than capable of defending their entrance from the full length of their landing board. And there's something you should notice. They're doing deck washing here. So if you look at the bees on the leading edge of the landing board, they're all kind of moving forward and going backwards. They are licking every inch of the surface of that landing board. 
Now to the left, you can see that they're lined up like aircraft and they're flapping their wings as much as they can. If you could smell it, uh, if you were in front of this hive, you would notice that it is just heavy with nectar. The honey is being dehydrated inside all of the colonies. They're bringing on about two to three pounds per day. And uh, hive numbers are great. The health of the bees is fantastic. And again, you can see the abdomens in the foreground here of those that are doing the deck washing maneuver. And you can just listen to it. Uh, the air movement here is substantial right in front of the hive. They really do a fantastic job of ventilating. And again, this is just a standard Langstroth hive design. And notice how big the opening is here where we would normally put an entry reducer. And we'll of course install that later on in the year when their numbers get down and the temperatures drop. And we do see some of the drones moving around. Now we're at the landing board of the Flow Hive 2. Notice that it has a much smaller entrance. We can't fit standard entry reducers here, but also notice that it has an aluminum bottom board cover. So it is a ventilated bottom board and we have that plastic tray inside where we can do Varroa counts. Varroa this year are extremely low. We've not treated, I've only been able to find one or two Varroa per colony. So they're doing a fantastic job of keeping those under control on their own. Again, we're just showing a nice strong colony. They don't need to have their entrance reduced anymore. And now we're looking at another flow hive. This is the full size flow hive standard, not the flow hive two. And notice that I did restrict their entrance. Now we have wooden shims stuck in here and that's because the bottom board of this colony, of this hive, is uh, screened. So they have plenty of ventilation inside we can pull out the insert and increase ventilation or we can push the insert back in from the back and uh, reduce air circulation as needed. So if you may recall, if you've been watching my other videos, these are the colonies that had the new queens installed. Now, this looks like a cast off box, but this is my ongoing experiment in my apiary. I'm repurposing old uh, bee boxes that I've had and you notice they have the vent holes. And this is what I'm culturing in the bee yard. This is a paper wasp. So I decided early in the year, since paper wasps don't attack or harass the honeybees, and I've never seen a beehive being robbed by paper wasps, I've also seen paper wasps driving off yellow jackets. So it occurred to me if we install a paper wasp nest intentionally in the apiary, then we would displace yellow jackets and we could use wasps to repel other wasps. So the beneficial wasps, like these paper wasps, which do a terrific job in pest control, are actually being raised by me right here in the apiary. And I'm gonna show you what their nest looks like here in a second. But since they have no impact on the honeybees, but do displace yellow jackets, my ongoing experiment is to see if increasing the numbers of paper wasps and providing them with habitat in close proximity to my honeybees would help reduce the numbers of the yellow jackets. And so far, that has been working. We have yellow jackets everywhere in uh, the environment this time of year, and uh, their numbers are extremely small here in my bee yard. So let's open it up. I want you to see what they look like. And just like managing bees, you just move slowly. I'm not smoking them. I'm just gonna move slow and deliberate and show you what they're like here. I also want you to notice, as they come flying out here, listen to how quiet their wings are. Now they're actually considering that I'm opening their nest and exposing them. They really are not that defensive. Uh, I am protected with a bee suit. I'm wearing a ventilated bee suit because it is so hot today, but I'm only wearing surgical gloves. And I want to show you this nest. They do have capped brood. That's what you see, the white cottony looking pieces around the perimeter. And there are a couple in the middle of the field here. We'll get you in closer so you can take a look. And you can see that some are in the process of hatching. We're coming to the end of their hatching season actually. So eventually uh, the last batch that grows here will all be queens. And then they will go into the next season 
after wintering over in solitary locations around the environment. So we're just going to put them back here. Again, listen to them. They don't sound angry at all. They're very laid back. That doesn't mean you can't be stung by them. You certainly can. This is my experiment that I wanted to share with you, and that is that I'm keeping them in the middle of my apiary. They have had zero impact on the bees. The bees don't seem to pay attention to them. They don't pay attention to the bees. They are not competing with the same, uh, they're not competing for the same resources that the bees do, although they do get some nectar. They're mostly pest control. They do get some pollen, but mostly their protein comes from other insects that they are feeding to their developing brood. So I think having paper wasps like these in the bee yard is a very interesting um, method for kind of having a wasp versus wasp situation so that the uh, yellow jackets don't have free reign. I would never manage yellow jackets like this. They would just boil out and sting you. Anyone who's had encounters with yellow jackets knows that they're extremely defensive. I am within a foot of these guys and they are of course very much on alert but they don't really consider me personally to be a threat. So they didn't really attack. Get, getting you in closer here. Get a nice look at them. I appreciate your comments down below. If you have ever seen a uh, paper wasp used to displace yellow jackets, I'd like to know more about that from your personal experiences. And I can say that this seems to be working out really well. Now listen to the difference in wing frequency. That's a yellow jacket flying by me. And uh, the paper wasps just don't tolerate it. Now I also have a large paper wasp nest inside my bee shed and I go in and out of it and uh, they don't pay any attention to me at all. I also have them in the eaves on either side of my bee shed again to prevent yellow jackets from moving in. So if I have to have wasps around, I would say these paper wasps are at the top of my list for those that are passive towards people, yet not passive towards other wasp species. Now, of course, we're out on the goldenrod here and there's another wasp. He is not a great pollinator. Obviously, they don't have the fur that the uh, bees have. They don't have those split ends that collect the uh, pollen, but this wasp is actively getting nectar. So not every wasp is a yellow jacket. Keep that in mind and let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.